mainstream, man, it's not all it's not all of what it's cut out to be, man. It's not. You know, and if I could give a, a kid any piece of advice, if I could go back and change my biggest thing would be, you know, stay in school. If you want to be powerful, knowledge is power. Knowledge is so easy to get nowadays. You know, I, I study every day, two hours a day. I'm constantly developing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a new YouTube channel that I'm going to create. I'm going to do this. I'm, gonna, I'm working on the books, and I'm constantly learning from YouTube. I'm constantly learning from social media. And if I would have known all this, man, I would probably have been a millionaire by now. I mean, they were going for about six. You were getting them for what, four? No, two, two, two and a half. Started doing that. Um, just got into the hundreds, you know, started making more and more. And I got greedy. Again? I got greedy again. And I was like, get me some cocaine. He was like, no, nah, man. He's like, you're doing fine with weed. What do you, what do you, why are you getting greedy? You're doing good. And you're off the radar, you're not hot. He's like, he, he even, he, he preached me the game. He's like, as soon as you do coke, you're gonna be on the federal radar. Don't do it. And I was like, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. Now blah, this was blah, a blah. Mexican from Mexico? Yeah. So I was like, man, if you don't get it from me, I'm gonna get it somewhere else. He's like, my hands are tied. This is all I can do for you. I was like, all right. So, I end up going to ask somebody else. I wasn't going to let my girlfriend do time. I wasn't going to let people didn't have nothing to do with it. I, I look at it like this. If you're man enough to get into the game, be man enough to do the fucking time. Don't drag people down with you because you're still going to get the time regardless. Yep. So that's what happened, man. I ended up, you know, time getting you time. Do? I ended up getting uh, 10 years. They fly me out. I uh, end up uh, in transit for about almost a year. Which is punishment. Pretty much punishment, you know. Uh, Oklahoma, Atlanta, it, I, it was all over now, the fucking place. Were you considered an active Latin king? Yes. So you were uh, STG, security threat group? Yes, so uh, they flew me out to the Vegas prison where it's underground, it's brand new, it's for all gang members. I was there for Six months with no contact by yourself. Uh, I was oh, going. So you were in a max. I was going fucking crazy. I had. Why my, did they do that? To I you? had a beard. Like. Why did they do that? To you? I, I, I honestly, I think that my background was killing me a little bit. It was, it was showing me as a high-ranking member when I, that I wasn't. Just all the shit that I've been around. You had the resume, but you weren't acting like. So, um, I remember. There was a really big fight with the Crips and the Bloods, and they had to double sell people in the, in the whole unit. Um, I'll never forget this day because uh, there was a Mongol there Mark. that couldn't be housed with nobody because he beat up all his cellies, all that. His name was Mouse. And, Mouse? yeah. And uh, I asked the captain, I was like, S sell me with him. And he's like, well, if I sell you with him, I, I need you to sign some legal paperwork. I was like, let's do it. Did you already know this guy? No, man, but I just had a feeling that we were going to be good. He was troubled. And uh, they, ended up, they ended up selling me with him, and this dude didn't know nothing about, like, religion, didn't know how to play chess. Just didn't know how to do a lot of stuff, man. And and the the three months that we were together, I taught him all these things. When he left, when he left, he broke down crying because like we had built a really strong bond together. You know, he had got a lot of time. He was involved with that stuff that happened in Vegas. Oh, the Laughlin shit. Yeah. So he had got a lot of time. Um, after that, I got transferred. I ended up in Florida. Uh, lot of land kings over there. And you chose to drop it. You said when you were going there, you were apprehensive about would there be Latin kings. Yeah. Because you had chosen to sort of drop out. Yep. I had already chosen to drop out. And I prayed. I prayed that there wasn't no land kings there. And there was a shitload of them. 63. You what know. What prison was this? Uh, Mariana, Florida. So 
you know, I started praying, man, and and. What's that? Dude? Well, real briefly, like, the Latin Kings is truly a national, well, international organization, and I mean, there. What's the how powerful? Like, you know, you could be in California and then be in New York, and it's still the word is on the grapevine, and there really is a. a, a they're very, right? they're very organized, very structured, man. And they, are they weaker than they used to be, or is it just as strong as ever? They're still the same, man. It's just not the same structure, man. You got a lot of crazy young bucks nowadays, but, you know, still strong. You know, strength comes in numbers. There's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of willing soldiers. So, you know, when I got there, I got a full care package, jogging pants, shoes, you name it, everything, food. Um, uh, they took care of me, you know, and I just didn't want to be part of that life no more. So you told them I'm done, and what happens then? Well, they told me, you know, there's gonna be there's gonna be consequences. consequences. What did what did you take that to mean? Oh, they were gonna try and kill me. Kill you, not beat you up. No, kill, you. kill me. I mean, and I said, you know, so be it. I went to work that day. I took a, took a knife with me just in case, and. Um, I was cooking, and at the time, one of my friends ran up to me and was like, hey, they're, they're taking all your boys out. And I was like, I ran out to the window. There was a big undercover case on them because they were smuggling phones in. That day, they took nearly most half of them out. And the other half that were left there pretty much looked up to me. So life got sweet after that. I ended up doing the drug program, got all that time off. I, got, I ended up getting four, four and a half years off my sentence. Uh, so you did about five years? Yep. Um, came home in February uh, 18, 2013, and just started doing my thing as a trainer. You know, um, when I came out in 2013, I still had the prison mentality. This is why I ended up violating my probation in 2015 and went back because all the, I ended up being a very successful trainer. I ended up doing really well in the fitness industry and it got to my head. I, I, I was living a different, drug dealer life's uh, high. So- uh, You're getting attention. You're again, making attention, making moves. And... Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, I end up violating, I go back. They put me in a really bad place in California. What it's place? a long pot. Long pot, oh, that's a- Behind that's... the wall. What's so bad about that? Just a lot of active- I game. mean, the first day I was there, a dude got killed in the kitchen for a piece of chicken. There's a lot of dudes doing life that have nothing to lose. You know, and uh, you were there for a parole violation. Yeah, and I remember I was walking into my cell, and and the CEO was like, I got five percent tattooed on me because I used to rep five percent nutrition. It's a supplement brand, and um, you know, uh, I was like, I'm a five percenter, and he's like, No, you're not. I was like, Whatever. He locked me in my cell. He came back. He's like, Hey, dude, I just googled you. You're the real deal. I was like, Yeah, I told you. He's like, what are you doing here? You got six months to do, why are you here? I was like, I don't know. So he went to talk to the counselor. The week later, I was, yeah, I got transferred to the minimum security prison. Um, never seen so many white people in my life in prison. Uh, a lot of bankers, a lot of sex offenders, a lot of- What prison was this? Um, Lompoc, California. Oh, well you said that was the bad. Oh, he tra they transferred you to the, the minimum version yeah. of Lompoc. Yeah. So you stayed in Lampac, but you went for the max. I, I was, uh, the, the max was uh, Victorville. Oh, Victorville. Victorville and then Lampac. Okay. I got to Lampac, um, and that's where the big so change. So where, where the stabbings were at was actually Victorville. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's where the big change started coming. I started putting together what I was going to do this time to stay out. I put together 
a bunch of fitness, fitness names, what I was going to do. I learned a lot while I was there because I hung around with a lot of the white dudes. I learned how to put an LLC together. I had a friend there that was, uh, I think he was Filipino or something. He knew a lot about business. He lives in Hollywood. Um, I started putting together my whole plan and, and you know, I came up with Wrong to Strong and uh, came home and hit the ground running, man. I started training, started, you know, my client base went up pretty fast. Um, started creating videos. Uh, I started competing in powerlifting. I broke two state records the first powerlifting competition I had. I broke another state record last week uh, for deadlift. Um, I think my mentality, my street mentality has got me f further and faster than the average person because I don't rest. I'm not idled. So I think that's what's made me successful, man. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't sleep. Right now I'm working on my book. I'm working on two other books. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. You know, everything's wrong to strong, pretty much, from going from wrong to strong. And we can buy some of your gear? Yes, www.wrongstrong.com. Um, can people hire you for personal training? Yep. They hire me for nutrition personal consulting. nutrition, uh, personal training. Um, you know, uh, I go to the prisons uh, here in Arizona twice a month to go speak, like motivational speaking to the inmates. Pretty much, my quote is, you are not your past. You 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 could change your past. You know, it's... And you train a lot of your wealthy people, police. Who do you train here? I train from... from uh, that's one of my shirts right there. Um, I train from... People that are in office, man, to, you know, governors, Arizona State Senators, to cops, firefighters, to rich old people. And, and you and, and they all know who you are. Obviously. They all know who I am. They know my story. I'm an open book. And um, I carry myself like that. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still me. I don't think I'll ever change. I'm pretty fucking hardcore. The way I lift, the way I, I handle myself. I carry myself with respect. Um, I'm the nicest guy in the block. Don't fuck with me. If I don't like you, you'll know that I don't like you. Um, I'm not going to pretend to smile and, you know, I don't do that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's worked for me, man. It's made, it's made me who I am today, man. And, you know, my brand is growing and, and, I, and I, I, I hope to, to take it a, a notch, you know, more out there. So it's amazing what, you know, you're, you've really only been free Two as years. an adult. Very little. <laughs> So just to end us, you know, you told us all this great stuff you're doing, but for a young guy who's thinking of being involved in a serious way in the streets, since you've been 15, how old are you? 42. 42. Since you've been 15, how many years have you been free? Six or something? Not a lot, man. I'm barely learning how to live, man. I, I barely walked for the first time on a beach last year. And yet millions of dollars have passed through your hands. Yeah. I was uh, you know, on, a, on a box. When you're making illegal money, you're in a form of a prison. Yeah. Because you're controlled by the money and the danger that's around you, the danger of losing your freedom, the danger of losing your life. You're in a self-imposed prison for this reward of money that you can't even enjoy. You can't even enjoy, man. Like this year on my bucket list to do, I want to go to a baseball game. You've never been to a baseball game? No. I want to go to a football Chicago game. Chicago with two teams, you've never been to a baseball game. No. You know, there's, there's all these things that I want to do. I want to go to a fucking opera show. Being a gangster, man, it's not all, it's not all what it's cut out to be, man. It's not. You know, and if I could give a, a kid any piece of advice, if I could go back and change my biggest thing would be, you know, Stay in school. If you want to be powerful, knowledge is power. Knowledge is so easy to get nowadays. You know, I, I study every day, two hours a day. I'm constantly developing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a new YouTube channel that I'm going to create. I'm going to do this. I'm, a, I'm working on the books, and I'm constantly learning from YouTube. I'm constantly learning from social media. And if I would have known all this, man, I would probably have been a millionaire by now.
Hey, what's up? JC with Growing Strong. I just want to thank everybody for all the follows, all the uh, signups to the channel. Uh, follow me on Growing Strong on Instagram, Growing Strong on YouTube, Growing Strong on Facebook. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for the support and, you know, just liking my videos and, and the work that we're doing. There's more to come, a lot more to come this year. And just, you know, keep, keep checking in and you'll, you'll see what's coming.